Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, very good, beautiful, beautiful. Here, let me turn you this way. Okay, baby, you are looking so good today. Beautiful, beautiful. Look this way, please. Ah, perfect, beautiful. You are looking just fine. Okay. Look this way. Besides the lounge lizard, there are lizards in incredible variety throughout the world. In bizarre and colorful costumes, these natural actors strut their stuff in deserts and in oceans. In forests, they frighten or seduce with spectacular display. The biggest stalk the earth as though they were resurrected dinosaurs. The smallest are shorter than a child's finger. Our imagination can see them as alien forms, but their origin and success is firmly on planet Earth. And some are simply as cute as we make them. In a time so long ago it's hard to imagine, reptiles explored the world. In an age before the dinosaurs, there were probably lizards among them. No fossil trace of them has been found earlier than 170 million years ago. By that time, a variety of true lizards were sharing the planet with the so-called terrible lizards, the dinosaurs. In this great age of reptiles, lizards of all shapes and sizes were firmly on the path that would lead to the present day. Because true lizards have claws and scales, and a superficial likeness to some dinosaurs, they have been confused. But lizards are not close relatives of dinosaurs. They are a quite different group of reptiles. The lizard's line of descent from the very first reptiles soon branched off quite separately from those animals which became dinosaurs and crocodiles. Some of the early lizards became ancestors of the snakes. But from then on, lizards remained quite separate from the other groups. All have survived into modern times. And if you like lizards, there are 4,000 different types to choose from. And some can still make you think of dinosaurs. The basilisk, for one, has that prehistoric look. But it's a lizard that's been walking on water as its party trick for more than a million years. Lizards are a varied bunch. They seem to lack a lizard factor, something that they all have in common. And yet there's something about a lizard that signals what it is. It's not the scales. Other creatures have those. It's not large size. There are small ones you'd hardly notice. While many hunt by day, others only come out at night. And it's no good counting legs. Most have four, it's true, but there are some which manage on fewer. This is no snake. It's a legless lizard. And there are lizards for all seasons. This one is lapping up ice and snow in Israel, an off-piste moment in the spring sunshine. Most lizards bask in the sun, on mountain top or tropical beach. Caribbean iguanas have to sunbathe to get their bodies up to speed. Their cold blood needs to be warmed. These iguanas on a Galapagos island also sunbathe, but when the dinner bell rings, they leave the land for a seafood meal. Clumsiness turns to aquatic grace as these massive iguanas head for the seaweeds. The 
the water is cold, but they have had to adapt to feeding on algae. There's little vegetation on their island. Sipping nectar in the Seychelles sunlight is far less strenuous. But most lizards aren't vegetarians. Chameleons like their meat. In the deserts of Arizona, the Gila monster also eats meat, and its bite is venomous. And the Komodo dragon of Indonesia, a truly monstrous lizard, has deadly saliva. Lizards can be scary. Living with lizards can be the stuff of nightmares. Nice to see you. How are you? But some people love lizards. 37 lizards allow Henry Lizard Lover to share their Los Angeles home. Iguanas want comfort. They want their food. They want to have a certain place to sleep in. They have their little positions they like to get in. Collard greens for you people. Oh, hey, hey. Let's put you right there. OK. I saw everything in an iguana that you would see in a human. Iguanas are Henry's favorite. To him, they're almost human. Perhaps they see him as almost lizard. Hello, kids. I brought you some food. It's lunchtime. Come and get it. It's nice and wet. Come on, I know you guys are going to like it. Hello, my name is Henry. These are my lizards, and I love them more than anything. Many years ago, I changed my name to Henry Lizard Lover because I love these lizards so much. I wrote a book about them, and I do pictures of them that I turn into postcards and greeting cards. Stuff's very healthy for you. Mmm. Lots of minerals, calcium. Just like us, lizards need a healthy diet to look their best. But the difference is, they love their greens. Try a piece. Feeding them nature's best veggies and knowing what makes them tick is all part of grooming these stars for Henry's catwalk. My main purpose is to show that iguanas are human-like. They're not some bizarre alien creatures that we have to fear or think of as, as creepy, germy creatures. Every iguana is a, a definite individual. They are all so different from each other, just like people. So Henry Lizard Lover treats his lizards just like people. In California, people like to keep clean, and so do lizards. This is where some of my other lizards stay. These are baby Chinese water dragons from Asia. And they're doing really, really well. They need to stay in a dark place to feel safe. OK. I'll leave you alone. I keep some of my lizards in these drawers. Actually, they go in on their own. They're, they're called Solomon Island tree skinks, and there's a whole family of them in here. This is the mother that's had several of the babies. 
There's a, this is a whole family. Uh, here's the male that the, the female mates with. And this is a baby from three years ago, about three years old now. And this is a baby they just had about four months ago. Look at this one. Look at this cute little baby. And they go in and out of these drawers on their own. This is one of my favorite ones, this male. I've had him for uh, about 10 years now. That makes him about 12 years old. He's about two years old when I first got him. These are wonderful little creatures. I call this one lovable. Okay. I'll just put them back in their drawers. They come out at night. I didn't really want to disturb them too much in the daytime here. And finally, the baby. They'll come out on their own. This is uh, one of my favorite large male iguanas. And I have to keep them in this room alone, separated from the other males, because they fight. And they're, they're very vicious towards each other. OK, I'm going to leave him with the collard greens. And he doesn't get a Henry Lizard lover kiss either. Another of the 10 million people with pet reptiles in the States is Phil Brower. Phil's Washington home is full of heated terrariums. This is my bedroom or my other part of my reptile collection. Hey guys, how you doing? Sleeping still? I'm home, like it or not. Hey, oh, to settle down. Where's her girlfriend? Is she still in here? There she is. You guys still getting along? Not beating up on each other? You guys are anxious. There we go. Oh, oh me arm. Oh, those are good. No one could be more passionate about his what pets than do? Phil. He's totally addicted to lizards and to feed and house them, he's just as keen on his day job. He's a zookeeper in a reptile house. Millions are spellbound by lizards. And the key to their charm may be their color. But the brilliant colors in a lizard's skin are more about sex, threat, and disguise than pleasing us. The sort of catwalk they'll be strutting can be dangerously competitive. Chameleons are the most colorful of all lizards. And their colors can be changed quickly. But how is it done? The scales themselves are transparent and dead. Only when color is pumped into cells beneath them from pigment reservoirs below does a new color show. When the pigment is drained back into the reservoirs, the skin color changes back. Colors and patterns change according to what mood the lizard's in. The chameleon is more dramatic as a quick change artist than most lizards. Dark colors and a rocking motion camouflage this Jackson's chameleon. A vivid display of color signals anger at the intruder. The trespasser lowers his profile and avoids confrontation. It was only looking for food but the dominant chameleon is guarding his territory and his fancy outfit advertises his aggression. The exact opposite is not being seen. There is a lizard here, but only when it moves can it be seen on the tree. Combat fatigues owe a lot to animal camouflage. Advance 
and don't be recognised is the rule on the bark and under leaves. Earning medals for leaf-like camouflage is this leaf-tailed gecko. A crevice in the rocks is as good a hiding place as a tree hole. This outcrop is home to a colony of South African armadillo girdled lizards. They come out to bask in the sun and to feed, but are ready to dive for cover even when their pursuer has their future welfare at heart. Louise Visagy of Stellenbosch University knows how these lizards, if caught in the open, earn the armadillo bit in their name. I work with great lizards. They live in crevices, which is really great because the predator can't lift those rocks. But what really makes this lizard special is the unique defensive behaviour that gave it its name. And that is why it's called the armadillo lizard. Imagine biting onto this. As you can see, all the hard spines are pointing outwards and the limbs are covering the soft belly. So, it simply lies there and waits for the predator to get bored. Then, it uncurls and runs back into the safety of the crevice. That's the armadillo lizard. The trick depends on a vice-like grip of the mouth onto the tail. Back to its crevice. But it will soon have to brave danger, basking out in the sun again. Which is what all lizards have to do. Even the largest, the Komodo dragon. Being cold-blooded really means not having a constant body temperature like we have. Reptiles must warm up in the sun. Sunlight gives them the energy to become active. The first rays have hardly warmed the granite before a chameleon stretches its body out to catch the sun. Like a solar panel, the chameleon presents as much surface as possible to the sun and absorbs heat. On top of the chameleon's head, just under the skin, is a light-sensitive organ, a third eye. It's called the pineal eye and helps pass information to the brain about the intensity and duration of sunlight, vital information that affects the timing of hibernation and mating. The two sides of a chameleon may look quite different. Here, the left is dark, but the right side facing the sun has become almost white to reflect the sun and prevent overheating. As temperatures change, the chameleon constantly adjusts its coloration. In the heat of midday, it may become a whiter shade of pale all over to maintain its cool and remain still in whatever shade is available. Deserts can be dangerously short on shade as well as food and drink, and yet hundreds of the world's amazing lizards survive on the burning sand. This desert lizard is not dancing, just cooling his feet. When he just can't take the heat anymore, he'll dive into the cool of a dune. To us, the cool of the sea might seem a comfortable place on an equatorial island. But for the marine iguanas of the Galapagos, the sea is a cold and risky necessity. They're descendants of South American land-dwelling iguanas castaways that floated in on rafts of drifting vegetation. Their huge claws help conquer these cliffs as they go to and from the sea. The only food for them here is offshore, the seaweeds, and the water is both cold and rough. Life for them has presented a double whammy. While feeding underwater, 
the iguanas must store heat in their body, and they do have some body fat as insulation. Claws have become anchors as the lizard grazes, holding its breath for about 20 minutes. But loss of heat is the main threat to survival. Stay too long, and the cold drains energy away. Become too cold, and the weakened lizard may not outrun the Galapagos sea lions, whose favourite game is to chase them ashore. <coughs> Timing is critical. They need to have eaten enough so that they don't have to swim again today. And they must still have enough energy left to climb the cliffs, where they will need to sunbathe. Excess salt is snorted out. And everyone settles down to getting warm enough for their bodies to digest their food. As ancient castaways, these iguanas adapted to their island life very well. They're lizards that know when to come in from the cold. Getting a grip on life for lizards means trees and rocks. A three-horned chameleon has the divided claws unique to chameleons. Three toes one side, two on the other. Ideal on these thin branches. An alternative is feet like tendrils. Slender toes that this green iguana uses to clamber around trees in Central America. But the biggest walking puzzle is set by some of the geckos. How does this toke gecko, with its curious upturning toes, walk upside down on trees, ceilings and windows? Each foot has claws and special pads, and it's the pads that hold the secret of walking up the wall. They're covered in millions of tiny hairs. The hairs are capable of hooking on to the slightest irregularity, even on glass. Each hair and a tiny charge of static electricity helps to give a gecko its grip. Some lizards even need to sprint. An agama on a granite copy will have to dash for cover if the world's fastest mammal gets seriously playful. And in Australia, this frilled lizard can pursue a would-be predator. The frills make it look bigger. It's a bluff. But for this normally slow lizard, it's a winner. But in downtown Lovington, USA, they'll tell you all the winners are there. Today is the world's greatest lizard race. And uh, it's part of our 4th of July celebration here in Lovington, New Mexico. Tell you what, guys, let's check that fence line right over there. It's the last chance to catch these lizards today, so let's see if we can get something. The World's Greatest Lizard Race has been a really exciting event that we've held every year. A lot of anticipation to it. The kids, you'll see them around town with buckets and mops and going through the lots, uh, trying to find a lizard. So yeah, there's a lot of excitement uh, in, to the lizard race. They first started catching mountain boomers, whiptails and skinks, for the 76th Bicentennial Celebration Race. And it's no easier now than it was then. The tail was shed to distract the pursuer. No harm has been done to the escaped lizard. Most lizards can contract a special muscle to cast off their tail painlessly. A new tail will grow in a few months. There are some people that uh, have a tough time finding a lizard, and we do know that the pet shop sells those lizards, and uh, they're not as fast as the uh, wild uh, type of lizards that we have here. Usually the winners are ones that, uh, that are found uh, native to the, this area. There's several different techniques in catching a lizard, and one of the most popular now is uh, uh, they have actually built traps or buried a bucket or a can underground with it open under hot lizard traffic areas, and the lizard will be walking through that area and get, get caught. And uh, come here, come here. Yeah, come here. Can you excuse me just a minute? I think we've got one. 
Great job, man. It's one of the whiptails, too. It's going to be one of the fast ones, man. Get ready. All right. Good job. <laughs> We got over here. We'll take six at a time. We're going to have a horn toad race. We want the crowd to get into it, guys. Have a little bit of fun. It's post time. They're off. Let's give them some encouragement. All right. Trainers may encourage their runners with feathers. Shoving is not approved of. If any lizard eats other competitors, it's disqualified. Half the town has turned up to cheer them on their way. And first place of the world's greatest lizard race and a chance to go to Orlando, Florida, goes to Ryan Roberts from Lovington. Congratulations, Ryan. All right. Y'all stay there, guys. Let's get a picture here. If you could scoot back just a minute there, buddy. In the everyday race for survival, lizards need good eyesight, especially the slower moving kinds. They need to see danger coming. Sight also helps lizards to find their own food. Swiveling eyes, like those of a chameleon, may seem likely to lead to confusion from our viewpoint, but it not only spots prey, it can also keep the other eye out for predators. This Narmib chameleon is tracking a beetle. The beetle will be lucky to escape now its movement and direction have been spotted. Once the beetle stops, the chameleon reorientates its eyes. Left and right eyes converge to provide range-finding depth to the image. Target locked on. That tongue is one and a half times the length of the chameleon. The bulbous end is very sticky and strong muscles pull the tongue and captive back into the mouth. Accuracy, stealth and long range surprise in unique combination. Once it's chewing, the chameleon's turrets are scanning for new game in the African bush. Arizona. Enter the horned toad. Well, it's a lizard, really. And it feeds on ants, but only two species of them. Their formic acid is essential in its diet. The lizard's camouflage is perfect. It finds an ant's nest and sits there invisible, eating his fill for weeks on end. But the city of Tucson, Arizona, is not in harmony with the lizards there, particularly the Gila monster. Its saliva is venomous, so its bite is to be avoided, and there's no antidote. Real estate is spreading so fast that a new house may be built over a Gila monster burrow. And Gila monsters can remain hidden underground for up to two years. Every week, frightened people send for the fire department. I think people call for 
are Gila monsters um, in part because they're afraid of them. Uh, they're, they know that they can be poisonous. A lot of times people call out a fear for their animals or for their children, but I, I don't think they pose an immediate threat. Normally they don't bite unless they're antagonized somehow. Gila monsters are becoming rare animals. Rural Metro, this private fire company, relocates many of the 500 or so that turn up in the city's backyards every year. Some get crushed by traffic. A few will even find their way back, to the householder's dismay. We'll take him somewhere within the same area that we caught him, hopefully within the same square mile, and we'll let him go. Um, we try and let them go somewhat away from homes, but still in a nice desert area where he can survive. If we take them further than a mile where we found them from, that their survivability dramatically decreases. The salivating dragons on the Indonesian island of Komodo would be a much more dramatic surprise in your backyard. And the people on Komodo have had close encounters, a few of them fatal. The lizard's copious saliva is not venomous, but can easily be the cause of an animal's death. A sudden burst of speed can sometimes get the dragon into striking distance, and all it will have to do is to slash at a leg with its very sharp teeth. The saliva will do the killing. The dragon plays a waiting game. Its saliva contains powerfully toxic bacteria. The injured deer very soon collapses with the infection and will quickly die. The smell of its rotting flesh brings the dragons to a feast. The dragons share the kill and reinfect their own saliva with more bacteria. Komodo is a long way from the world of Henry Lizard Lover. Anxious that lizards should not make people nervous, Henry takes a stroll on the balmy streets of Los Angeles. But there's a hidden personal agenda to his lizard evangelism. He meets a few new friends when he and his reptiles are doing lunch. I love uh, getting all the women to meet the lizards and embrace the lizards, and then sooner or later, I meet women that embrace me, and I, I meet a lot of girls this way. It's always been a, a very rewarding thing. One way or another, I've met some really beautiful, fine women that uh, love the lizards and love me. It's about 10. <laughs> Romance is also in the air on Komodo Island. This male dragon's eye has been caught by a female of similar size. For such formidable creatures, their courtship is surprisingly gentle. He's smelling her with his tongue. She seems pleased by his attention. He's cautious, needing to be sure of her receptiveness. He's not looking for a fight by mistake. Pawing 
her gently, as well as rubbing her back with his chin. He is using dragon language for, look how strong, healthy and virile I am. He's still in a will-she-won't-she she state a few minutes later. Something isn't satisfactory to her. It's just not his day. Most lizards lay eggs after mating. These were laid by a green iguana in Central America. They'd been incubating underground for some 90 days. Fully formed when they come out of the egg, these youngsters receive no motherly welcome. Every hatchling has to look after itself in a dangerous world. Green iguanas are not into maternal care, and the 40 or so newcomers from this clutch will be well equipped to survive on their own. In these vineyards in South Africa, there are lizards that do not lay eggs. The young of this cape dwarf chameleon are being born alive. This mother has been holding eggs in her body. The eggs hatch as they emerge, and the young lizard makes its way out. Cape dwarf babies are very small. Mother is only 12 centimetres long. It looks an undignified nursery. Mum takes no interest in their future. It can't fall far among the vines. She has given birth to some six to ten babies, and all must find their feet on their own. In times past, the chameleons have suffered when insecticides were sprayed on the vines, or they were killed by mechanical grape harvesting. But why kill so efficient a natural bug hunter? The idea is catching on, and money is saved on chemicals as the chameleons go to work in the vineyards. Plenty of chameleons means fewer pests. In a few vineyards, they now look after grapes and Cape Dwarf chameleons. The valuable reptiles are carefully removed before mechanical harvesting begins. They're taken to nearby woods, where they can hunt while the grapes are gathered. They'll make their own way back after the harvest. In Central America, lizards are big business in different ways. These men in Costa Rica are hunting iguanas in the rainforest. Green iguanas are a traditional source of meat in a country with no large wild animals and where protein is in short supply. Today, they're also big money in the foreign pet trade. An iguana at the top of this tree will be caught by its own escape method. 
frightened, it will leap for safety. If it survives, it may become another of more than 10 million iguanas exported to North America as pets in the last eight years. In some countries, trafficking lizards is depleting wild stocks at an alarming rate. When night falls, lizards face new predators. They can be sitting targets for nocturnal hunters. Sunrise in a Mexican desert even brings problems for a desert night lizard. Dusk and dawn are times favoured by many predators for hunting. Too slow to escape, off comes its tail, and the scorpion has something for its trouble while the night lizard lives to grow a new one. The next tail it grows won't detach as readily. Unlike a cat, the lizard has only two lives, not nine. Scorpions, despite their sting, are not a problem meal for an agama lizard in Africa. It may have some immunity to the sting, but it's always careful to bite it off before it swallows. And in Baja, California, one lizard will eat another. It's high noon, and there's a standoff between a collared lizard and a side blotched. The collared one watches only for movement, just like some dinosaurs are thought to have done. Even a chameleon seeking warmth at sunup finds enough energy to make breakfast of another basker that's not yet up to speed. never knew what hit it, and the chameleon sure gets a full breakfast. In this dog-eat-dog -dog world of lizards, is it possible that dragons eat dragons? The answer is yes, and it's his own family he's after. Young Komodos need to keep out of an adult's way. Being small, a youngster can climb trees. But the adult knows something's up there, and it may fall out of the branches. The adult doesn't wait around. There'll be food elsewhere. Young or old, Komodo dragons are not animals you'd expect to see in a zoo. 
No, no, you can't climb up onto my head. No. Phil Brower and Kraken the Komodo are a favourite attraction at Washington Zoo. This is Phil's rather dramatic day job. I have a real good relationship with Kraken. She's by far my favourite animal here. She's not like that with everyone. There's a few keepers where she acts a little aggressive towards, where she'll whip her tail or kind of puff up at them, which tells me they're also very intelligent animals where they can actually recognize people and almost bond towards them a little bit. Getting ready to feed Kraken now. Have a few rats we're gonna go ahead and give to her. Dragon. We actually have her trained where I whistle and then she's actually come to the point where anytime she hears a whistle, she knows right away that she's gonna get fed and she'll start running back and forth. And I have some four foot tongs where I'll put the rat on the end of that and feed it to her. Oh, 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 it's a rat. Oh, let me have it, please. Oh, you're so hungry, aren't you? Oh, I know. It's been a whole week since you've been fed. Oh, it's a rat. Got that faster than I planned. Oh, it's another rat. Kraken gets well exercised being fed like this. Phil uses the grab stick because she gets very excited. But her bite would not be as dangerous as her wild relatives. Fresh meat does not give her the poisonous bacteria in her saliva. You got the tail here. Not enough? Okay, never mind. See you later, Kraken. See you tomorrow. Our fascination for lizards, large or small, is worldwide. Questions about keeping pet lizards pour into Henry Lizard Lover's home in Los Angeles. His lizard mail is never ending, but that's what Henry and his lizards love. I've got an email here from a woman that's telling me about some um, real aggression problems she's having with her pet male iguana. He was mellow in the beginning, and now he's starting to stalk and, and try to attack her. For the past 10 years or so, I've been uh, getting so many letters and phone calls from people. They're always asking questions about diet, about behavior. A lot of times there are people sharing information about their experiences with iguanas. I try to help them when I can. Not all these uh, behavior problems are, are easy to deal with when it comes to iguanas. This guy right here, this iguana, is, he's, he's very mellow and easygoing, but things can change and become just crazy aggressive, like they're gonna attack a human. And I'd like to show you what that looks like when he sees another male iguana. Let's go over here. I want you to see the potential problem there is with some of keeping some of these iguanas, especially when the males see other male iguanas. And this is why I keep them separate. Now I'm gonna show this guy to seven inside the room. They're really uh, ready to do battle. These two iguanas would love to tear each other apart. They'd kill each other. Mr. Seven is, is really worked up. Ooh boy, he's really worked up. He, He's doing the full uh, tail waggle, and he's taking a, a stance. He's standing up. He's sucking in his gut. Uh, these are all the signs, the body language, of, of rage and anger towards another male iguana. Now, see, now they'll do this to a human sometimes and bite, and that bite is really intense. See, now, that's not the time to try to pet him. Okay, wow. Okay, wow. That's, that's really wild. It's, it's a very wild, serious behavior. Uh, now this iguana, since he's seen other male iguanas, it's, it's my theory, when, when the males are able to grow up as a, as a captive pet and they see other male iguanas, then they won't be confused about a human and they won't try to attack a human. The problem is, is a lot of people raise these males alone without ever seeing other male iguanas and that's when these male iguanas will be confused and they will actually attack and stalk humans and try to attack them and viciously bite them like they would another male iguana. But he's, he's really a good guy. He knows that I'm not that other male iguana. 
and I'm going to put them down now and let them rest. Here we go. That looks good. This lizard Hollywood is one man's profitable way of telling the world these reptiles are great. But colourful, diverse and intriguing, they can inspire our imagination in real life, not only as a lizard greeting. So Henry, let's keep a sense of scale. This lizard here has a beautiful face with just the right kind of look in her eyes. And these are um, very nice proportioned hands and arms and legs. Uh, she looks great. She looks very human-like. Okay, that's good. Okay, hold it right there. That's good. Don't look at me. Look the other way. Those beautiful eyes. She uh, will sit in any position I put her in just because she's calm and relaxed. There's no tricks, she's not hypnotized. She's not afraid, she doesn't think anything's gonna hurt her in any way, and she's just calm and relaxed. 